Do you see any difference in these routers showing in the screen? Of course, you can see that one is a sad router and the other one is a happy router. Do you know why the left side router is sad and why the right side router is happy? The reason is the right side router has active interfaces. Somebody configured this router to enable its interfaces and assign the IP address on it, so it can perform the functions of a router efficiently. On the other hand, the left side router doesn't have any configuration inside it. Its interfaces are down, and there is no IP address assigned to its interfaces, so it cannot perform the function of a router very well. So how this happy router got the configuration? Was there any configuration by default in it when it was purchased? No. This configuration was provided by someone who know how to configure the interfaces of the router, a network engineer like you and me. He enabled the interfaces of the router and provided the IP address to the interfaces so that the router can communicate between its interfaces. On the other hand, the SAD router doesn't have an enabled interfaces and IP addresses, so it cannot help in any network communication. So, in this video I will show you how can we convert a lazy, empty router into a smart and functional router by configuring its interface. So, this chapter is about how to configure a router interface. Welcome to CCNA 200-301, Implementing and Administering Cisco Solutions. Chapter number 43, How to Configure a Router Interface? Enhance your skills using ARASH Academy. I have put the complete CCNA playlist at the right top corner of the screen. In this chapter, we are going to discuss about how to configure the interface of the Cisco router, how to check the status of the router interfaces, and how to enable and disable the router interface. In the previous videos, we were talking about the basic configuration on network switches. In this chapter, we will talk about the interface configuration at a Cisco router. As you already know, the network switch and router perform different functions in the computer networks. A switch is helping in the communication of devices in the same network, and a router is helping in the communication of the devices from the different network. A switch is used to switch the packets, and a router is used to route packets. Another difference would be that the switch is working in layer 2, the data link layer of the OSI model, based on the MAC addresses. On the other hand, the router is working at the layer 3, the network layer of the OSI model, based on the IP addresses. When you connect network devices to the switch, and if they are in the same network, then they can communicate together, because the switch function is to switch the packet in the same network. But if you want communication between two different network devices, then you need to connect a router in between them to route the packets between the networks. In this case, the router is working as a gateway between different networks. Let me show you an example. We have network A, which contains multiple computers, and we also have network B, which also contains multiple computers. All the computers in network A can communicate together because they are in the same network. Similarly, all the computers in network B can communicate together as they are also in the same network. But the computers from network A cannot be communicate with the computers in network B because there is no communication in between them. So to make this communication, we can connect one router in between them. So this router is working as a gateway between the two different networks, network A and network B. Here the router is functioning as a gateway, as an entry and exit point of the network. If any communication needs to be sent from one network to another, then that should be passed through this gateway. When a computer sends a packet to a destination device, 
The network switch first checks if that network device is connected to the same network or not. If it is connected to the same network, then switch forward that packet to that device because it knows in which interface that destination device is connected. On the other hand, if the switch cannot find the destination device in its network, then it forwards that traffic to the gateway. That is our router. So the router will check in which network that device is available and then route the traffic to that interface where the destination device network is connected. Now I am going to discuss the difference between switches and routers in the interface configuration. The network switch interfaces are enabled by default. That means when you connect network devices to the switch interface, the interfaces can communicate with devices automatically without any additional action from your side. But on the other hand, the router interfaces are different from the switch interfaces because the router interfaces are disabled by default. That means when you connect a device to the router interface, it cannot communicate with the device because the router interface would be in a shutdown condition by default. So if you want to use a router interface, First, it needs to be enabled, and that is not enough. We also need to assign one IP address to that interface. Then only the router can communicate with the network that is connected to it. Now let's discuss the router interface configuration steps. Step 1. Identify the interface. First of all, you have to identify the interfaces of the router as per your network diagram, whether it is interface number 1, 2, three, or something like that. Step two, choose the interface. Here you have to go to the configuration mode in your Cisco router iOS, and then go to the specific interface configuration to perform your changes. Step three, assign the IP address. The next step would be assigning an IP address and subnet mask for your interface. You can give here an IP address as per your network design. Please be aware that even if you give an IP address to the interface, it cannot make any communication because its status would still be in shutdown mode. Step 4. Unshut it down. The last step would be to enable the router interface so that it can communicate with the network. To enable the router interface, we can use the negate command called no shutdown. So when you enter this command, the router interface status will be changed from shutdown mode to active mode. Now, let me take you to my Cisco lab and show you how to configure the interfaces of a Cisco router. I have illustrated a small network that contains three computers and one router. The router has three interfaces and three computers are connected to each interface. All the interfaces are in different networks because routers are used to connect multiple networks. We cannot have two router interfaces with the same network ID as it will conflict with each other. In this diagram, you can see that PC1 with IP address 192.168.1.100 is connected to Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface of the router. The IP address of that interface is given 192.168.1.1. The second PC, PC2 with IP address 10.10.1.100, is connected to Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 interface of the router. The IP address of that interface is given 10.10.1.1. The third PC, PC3 with IP address 172.16.1.100, is connected to Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2 interface of the router. The IP address of that interface is given 172.16.1.1. Now, let's follow the steps and configure the interface of the router accordingly. The first step is to identify the interfaces of the router. So here we are going to list all the interfaces of the router and identify the connected interfaces from the Cisco IOS. Now I am at my router console. Currently, I am at user mode. Now let me go to the privileged mode by using the command enable. Now I jump into the privileged mode. 
Now how can I check the interface status of my router? For that, I can use the command show IP interface brief. When I enter this command, iOS display, the details of all the interfaces available in my router. Let me run the command and show you the result. Now you can see all the available interfaces in my router. In these results, the first category is interface types. Here you can see gigabit Ethernet interfaces, fast Ethernet interfaces, and VLAN interfaces as well. In the diagram, we have connected computers to the interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0, 0 slash 1, and 0 slash 2. So the next step is to configure these interfaces from the configuration mode. The second category is IP address. It displays the IP address of the interfaces that are configured. Here, we didn't give any IP address yet. That's why it is showing as unassigned. When we assign an IP address, that will be displayed here. There is another category called status. This indicates the current status in layer 1, the physical layer of the OSI model. If it is showing up, it means the interface is enabled and cable connected. If it is showing down, it means the disabled or the cable is not connected to that interface. If it is showing administratively down, that means the interface is in shutdown mode. This means the interface is disabled by an administrator or by configuration. It is needed to enable it for the network communication. So this is one of the differences between a switch and a router interface. Switch interfaces are enabled by default but router interfaces are disabled or shut down by default. The reason behind this concept is to protect the network from a misconfiguration that is taken from an interface. The unwanted configuration from a router can destroy the network communication, such as DHCP configuration, routing protocols, and so many other things. So, to avoid this kind of situation, Cisco shut down the router interface by default. The administrator can configure the interface first and then enable it to use the interface. There is one more category called protocols. This indicates the status of the layer 2, the data link layer connectivity of the OSI model. If you see the protocol status is up, that means there is layer 2 connectivity. If it is showing as down, that means there is some problem with the layer 2 connectivity that needs to be addressed by a network engineer. Now, let's come back to our lab. We have already identified the interfaces. Here the interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 is the one where PC1 is connected. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 is the one where PC2 is connected. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2 is the one where PC3 is connected. The next step is to configure the IP address at the interfaces and then enable the interface. So now I am going to jump to the configuration mode of each interface and then assign the IP address. First, let me go to the configuration mode by using the command configure terminal. Then go to each interface and then assign the IP address using the command. Here I am going to the gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. First, using the command interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0. Then use the command IP address, then provide the IP address, and then the subnet mask of the interface. Here the IP address would be 192.168.1.1, and subnet mask would be 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
Then complete those interface configurations as well. Now we have completed all three interfaces of the router. To verify this, let's go to the interface status and see the result. Type show IP interface brief. Now you can see that all three interfaces got an IP address. Because we have assigned the IP address and subnet mask to the router interfaces. These interfaces are now showing up and running. Because we have enabled the interfaces using the command no shutdown. There are no more administratively down interfaces. Also, when you see the protocol status, all three interfaces are showing up. So, in this chapter, I have shown you how to configure the interface of the Cisco router, how to check the status of the router interfaces, how to enable and disable the router interface. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Enhance your skills using ARASH Academy.